Welcome to my lecture online. Among the most successful missions to Mars were definitely Viking 1 and Viking 2, and they had a very special mission. Considering also that they were launched in 1975 with technology that was invented between 1965 and 1975, they performed amazingly well. What was the special mission for Viking 1 and Viking 2? To run some tests on the soil and try to determine if life existed on Mars. Now they took, they picked two landing sites that had the most promising chance of finding life. Where did they pick the landing sites? Well, we have a little map of Mars here. So they picked it in the northern plains close to where they believed there was running water or liquid water in abundance in the past and where there might be, uh, where we might find fossilized life or actual still life in the soil. And so we pretty well think that that would be the place to go look for it. So that's where they landed. Viking 1 here landed in this location right here on the western end of the large plains and Viking 2 landed near a big depression where the altitude was lower and water probably existed there longer um, in the northeastern part of the plain. The names of those locations were Crease Planitia and Utopia Planitia. So that's down in the northern plains of Mars. Notice that they launched in August and September of 1975 and arrived in July and August of 1976. So they were, they were on their mission uh, en route, about 400 million mile journey, so they didn't have the most optimum uh, path to get to Mars. They were on route for close to a year. And it turns out that Viking 1 was about 200 miles off target, about one minute off at the landing location. So the timing was, was pretty good, but the difference in location, they were about 200 miles off location of where they wanted to land, and primarily due to solar radiation and venting of gases. So any sort of small change in direction due to the pressure, the solar pressure, the solar radiation, and any eventual outgassing that wasn't quite planned for can put you off target. And so by the time they got to Mars, they were slightly off where they wanted to be, but not, not bad for a 400 mile journey. Notice that the, uh, the equipment that they, used, that they sent to Mars became heavier than the ones they used to send in earlier years. The total weight was about 7,500 pounds or about 3,400 kilograms, where the orbiter was almost 2,000 pounds and the lander was 1,300 pounds. Landing an object of 1,300 pounds on the surface is no small feat, but both Viking 1 and Viking 2 landers landed successfully. We'll have a video especially to talk about how exactly that landing went and how difficult it would be to land something uh, safely on the surface. We know that the Soviet Union had tried a number of times before and numerous times failed in doing it successfully. They probably came in too hard and things were damaged on the landing. Notice that the orbiters are the main, the key in, in getting information from the surface to the orbiters and then to the Earth. They were kind of a relay station. Also, the orbiters were used to take lots and lots of pictures. Notice there were 57,000 total images made from the orbiters for, for Viking 1 and Viking 2. So they used the relay. Now, unfortunately, uh, Viking 1 orbiter ran out of propellant in August 17, 1980, and Viking 2 orbit ran out of propellant on July 25, 1978. That propellant is necessary to keep adjusting the orbit to make sure they stay in the, the right orbit. Eventually, they'll come crashing down if you don't. And so, uh, when the Viking 2 orbiter no longer became usable, both the landers of Viking 1 and Viking 2 used Viking 1 orbiter to relay the information to the Earth. Unfortunately, Viking lander 1, or Viking 1 lander, I should put Viking 1 there, Viking 1 lander was accident, accidentally shut down prior to the end of its mission, although they got lots of good information from it uh, for several years, and Viking 2 lander used Viking 1 orbiter until 1980, so the, it was in use for about four years on the surface. Can you imagine four years of successful experimentation and picture taking from the surface uh, back in the 1970s? So the, um, the orbiter performed 1,485 orbits before they ran out of propellant, and so that was also quite a feat. Now, what was the main purpose of the Viking landers, besides 
getting the knowledge of how to land on the surface and, and, and analyzing the surface, they were in particular looking for life, life in the soil, and they did that by conducting three different very special experiments that were very specially set up where they thought that if they ran those experiments they would get pretty good evidence if life existed on the planet or not. On top of that, they did one more additional observation using a spectrometer to see if there was any organic material in the soil as well. Combined with those two, if they had both a positive here and a positive there, um, oh, and the one measurement, so the, if they had at least one positive in one of the three experiments and one positive in the measurement of organic material, then they could say that there was a high probability that there was life on the planet. Now it turned out that two of the three experiments actually did show some positive results and one of them very strongly so, but the measurement tended to indicate that there might not be any organic life or organic material period on the surface of Mars. So the, hmm, the I guess it depends who you talk to, whether or not you want to believe if there was actually life on Mars or not based on the result of the ex experiments but the results were extremely interesting and we'll get into more details of that as well. So there you have it, the two Viking landers was a tremendous success for the space program to Mars. We learned an enormous quantity of information from those two landers and they operated for four years on the surface so it's quite amazing how long they were able to last. So. That's it. We'll get to some more details about the landing and the actual experiments that they ran and the results of those experiments that indicated that life might actually exist on Mars. So stay tuned and we'll show you that.